Welcome everyone to Let's Learn from Limbic Episode 1. In this series, I am going to analyze my own replays in order to identify some of the mistakes I make. The reason for this is, one, you are playing the game, it is very easy to overlook and often not even notice a lot of the mistakes you make. However, if we identify them, I can learn from my mistakes, and the hope of this series is that you learn from my mistakes as well. That's why it's called Let's Learn with Limbic. I still have so much to learn about this game. If I identify my own mistakes and learn from them, and you also learn from my mistakes, then we are both learning how to play StarCraft better together. Okay. So my opponent here is Sir Cheddar, which is very appropriate given the strategy he is going to try to do in this game. He is going to do a proxy oracle. The reason I picked this game is because this is a strategy that absolutely terrorizes a lot of Terrans, because it's very difficult to identify. In this episode, I will hopefully teach you how to identify a proxy oracle is coming what to do after it has come, and how to hopefully win games where your protest opponent does that against you. Now I have already made what I believe to be a mistake, and that is not scouting with the SCV, even though I am going for the Reaper Expand. Now this map is Shakura's Plateau, that means that there are four possible spawn locations. I know that my opponent has not spawned here because on this map you cannot spawn vertically from your opponent. However, there are still two locations that he could be in. If you scout with just the Reaper and you check the wrong location first, as you can see I am going to do here, then by the time the Reaper gets to the opponent's base, and you realize that the opponent is going for a proxy oracle, it can be too late. If I scouted with my SCV, not only would I get the scout off with the SCV of course, but I would know where my opponent is and I would not have to waste the time that it will take for me to check this empty location first. And you will see that is actually going to play an enormous role this game. Alright, so as you can see this Reaper is heading over to the wrong location. A little frustratingly, the Reaper went right by the proxy Stargate. Now, here's where defeating the strategy is the most difficult. This base looks almost exactly like a base of a player who is just playing completely normally. They have a gateway, a cybernetics core, and gas taken. That's it. We are going to learn what to look for in order to identify, okay, this person is not playing standard, they are going for a proxy oracle. Of course, once you know your opponent is going for a proxy oracle, what you need to do is build a missile turret in each of your mineral lines. If you went for the Reaper expansion, there is no way you can have enough marines to fight an oracle by the time it is finished. A standard proxy oracle finishes at, well, no, a standard proxy oracle arrives at your base at about five and a half minutes. At about five and a half minutes, you will have four marines. If you opened with the Reaper Expand, you need at least six marines to defeat a proxy oracle, to defeat an oracle. Otherwise, the oracle will just kill your marines and you'll feel very sad. So, we absolutely must have missile turrets. However, you of course do not want to just build the missile turrets blindly, because if you do that and it turns out your opponent is not going for the proxy oracle, that's just a ton of resources you ended up wasting. So, we need to know how to find out whether our opponent is doing it. I'm going to show you how. This Reaper, actually I'm going to put it on just my vision so you can see what I see. This Reaper jumps up here. I now know that my opponent is in this location, because once again, he can't be here. We already checked here. One thing I notice immediately, he does not have a natural expansion. Now if you Reaper expand, by the time the Reaper gets to the opponent's base, on a two-player map, 
where you don't waste time checking locations where they are not, your opponent will usually just start their expansion. Of course, if you ended up checking the wrong location first, and you end up arriving here later, then your opponent's expansion should be relatively well underway. The fact that it is not even started yet means that our opponent is doing something aggressive. The reason I know this is because the only reason you would have to slow yourself down like this is if you think you will do enough damage to your opponent to justify it. Okay. So the Reaper is going to hop into the opponent's base. And what do I see? I see a pylon building. Now, you might think, oh wow, that doesn't tell you anything. Of course he's going to be building pylons. The key that we are looking for here is the number of pylons in the opponent's base. If you see a cybernetic score finished, then you know that your opponent either A, has two pylons already completed, or B, they supply block themselves for no reason we see this pylon is still warping in. I don't think that my opponent supply blocked themselves for no reason. I think that they must have a third pylon somewhere out on the map. At this point, I am pretty sure he is going for the proxy oracle. I'm just going to check as much of the rest of the base I can before the stalker kills this reaper in order to be certain of it, because once again, I don't want to end up wasting resources. So I'm actually going to put this onto the player camera. This means that right now you're looking at what I was looking at while playing this game. So I'll go ahead and resume it now. You can see this stalker is not happy with my reaper. Uh, very rudely shooting at him. And I just jump out of here and make sure he gets out of there safely. Immediately, I build an engineering bay. Now that I know my opponent is going for proxy something, I build this engineering bay. Remember, he is not building a nexus down here. He has only two pylons here, which means he must have a third pylon somewhere out on the map, probably also building some kind of structure there as well. Most of the time, the structure will be a stargate in order to build an oracle. Sometimes Protoss players will do proxy DTs. The answer to both of these is missile turrets. So that's why I'm building this engineering bay, even though I have not seen the stargate yet. I know it's there. Unfortunately, as you can see, this oracle has already started building. Oracles take 50 seconds to build, even less with chrono boost. Each chrono boost the opponent uses on this will shave off 10 seconds. So oracles take a lot closer to 30 seconds to build. An engineering bay takes 35 seconds to build, and a missile turret takes 25 seconds to build. This means that even without Chrono Boost, if you start the engineering bay and your opponent starts the oracle at the same time, there is no way you could possibly have a missile turret completed by the time the oracle is done. Now, if I had SCV scouted and I knew where my opponent was, not only may, have, may I have been able to figure out my opponent was doing this just with the SCV scout, but the Reaper would have just moved from my base to my opponent's base, instead of wasting time with this detour. I lost about 20, maybe 30 seconds doing this. Imagine if I had realized that my opponent was pulling off the strategy 20 to 30 seconds earlier. This engineering bay would have gone down 20 to 30 seconds earlier, and the missile turret would have also gone down about 20 to 30 seconds earlier. And you will see just exactly how huge that ends up being. So right now, I am just adding on my additional barracks. These are a tad late. That was a mistake of mine. Notice I kept this Reaper alive. I will be using him to scout again later. And I'm just loading up this bunker that I have already made. Okay. Remember how I said a proxy oracle arrives at your base at about 5 minutes 30 seconds? Well, we're at 5 minutes 30 seconds, and the missile turret just started. Once again, missile turrets take 25 seconds to build. Imagine if this had gone down 30 seconds earlier. It'd be done, not just starting. And I would have taken zero damage from this oracle. Instead, because of the fact that I did not see this in time, I am going to take tons of damage from this oracle, as you can see here. 
So I try building a missile turret. Unfortunately, he kills the SCV that was building it. I start a missile turret down here. And luckily, he tries to come down here and kill that too, but he runs out of energy. So this location, at least, will be safe to mine from. Okay, so I sent the Reaper in his base, had a little look around, and then parked him at the Zelnoka Watchtower. I will be using him again later. You can see, once again, I'm trying to build this missile turret. He built a second Oracle, and I know that's a second Oracle because the first one cannot have enough energy to start killing SCVs again. So I'm well aware that he's built two now. And he once again denies this missile turret. This time, however, I'm going to be able to finish it. He tries again, fails, and I will be able to mine from this location again soon. He killed seven SCVs with that. That is huge. I have 17 workers now. In other words, he destroyed about a third of the workers I've totally built this game. Bearing in mind that I have been building workers to replace since those seven SCVs have died. I believe the best option for my Protoss opponent here would have been to just expand and try to play standard. That however is not what he has decided on doing. He has added on two extra gateways. He wants to do a one base all in and end this game quickly. Remember how I mentioned that I kept this Reaper alive? You will see exactly how invaluable it ends up being. So I move him in here, I see that there is still no expansion. I know now that he must be doing some kind of one base all in, because otherwise he would have the expansion by now. So I send the Reaper into my opponent's main to confirm what I basically already know. I see two additional gateways and I'm saying to myself, okay, this guy's definitely going to try to kill me now. I need to add on some extra bunkers, which is exactly what I do. You can see the Reaper once again gets out with his life. Oracles are trying to be annoying. Fortunately, I managed to ward them off. And I build a tech lab. I am going to start STEM as soon as I can. The reason for this is STEM is basically the anti-all-in. All all-ins used against Terrans are basically designed to kill them before they get stim. It is much harder to destroy a Terran who has stim than it is to destroy one who does not. As you can see, I'm even building a missile turret here to protect this add-on that is researching stim, because I don't want him to just run in with a couple of oracles and destroy it before the research finishes. I am just adding on as many units as I can. I'm building a Marauder since I figure he's probably going to have some Stalkers. And I'm just building lots of Marines since I know he has Stargate units. I add a Missile Turret to my little wall here. I figure by this point he's probably building Void Rays in order to bust these bunkers. Void Rays with their Prismatic Alignments deal tons of damage to bunkers because they are armored. Even if he wasn't building void rays, this missile turret would still be useful against the oracles. Now here's another mistake I made. When, for one, these SCVs were pulled too late. They should have been ready and waiting. For two, when I pulled them, as you can see here, I clicked the auto repair icon, foolishly assuming that they would go to this bunker. Instead, if we go back just a few seconds, you will see that there was a slightly damaged SCV it's this one here that they decided was way more important to repair than this bunker. Ready? See that? See how instead of repairing the bunker, they're all crowding around this SCV to repair it? Had I not done that, I probably would have been able to save this bunker. You can see I managed to kill one of the oracles, because he is actually not using Guardian Shield on these sentries. Guardian Shield is hugely important right now. Bear in mind that my army is almost entirely Marines. Guardian Shield will reduce the damage of Marines by 33%. Not using it is just silly. One Guardian Shield is much better than an extra force field, I promise you. So this bunker I am going to lose 
because of that silly auto repair thing, but I managed to keep everything else alive. Now, this is actually starting to look very good for me. My opponent is on a one base economy. I am on a one and a half base economy, I'd say. I definitely would not call this fully operational, but I do have two orbital commands constantly producing SCVs and mules. Unfortunately, right now, I am supply blocked. There is actually no excuse for this. I did not lose any supply depots in that attack. This is the worst possible time to be supply blocked in situations like these. Right now, I cannot build anything out of these barracks until the supply depot is finished. As, I, as you can see, I am just now starting one. Supply depots take 30 seconds, barracks units usually take about 30 seconds, marines take 25 seconds, marauders take 30. In other words, I am going to lose a complete round of barracks units due to this supply block. In situations like these, that is huge. Imagine this fight if I had an additional three marines and an additional marauder. I basically lost that due to being supply blocked. Not getting supply blocked is super important, and that's something that I definitely need to work on. Not losing my cool, not getting distracted and nervous and, you know, not messing up because it is, to, in my defense, very easy to kind of lose your focus and lose your sense of rhythm in the game when it ends up like this, when you're put in a situation that you're not comfortable with and you know all your timings are thrown off however that's something that i really should try to be better about however things are looking up for me i still have a reasonably well defended area and my stim is almost done remember what i said about stim basically being the anti all-in you are going to see exactly why that is the case so he flies in with some void rays, kills that missile turret. Thankfully it was the missile turret and not this tech lab he killed. For some reason, every time a tech lab of mine dies, it's always right before it finishes stem and it's annoying. So I decide I've got plenty of units here. I know you can't have that much because you've been on a one base economy all this time. You can see he's kind of desperately trying to take more bases here, but this game as you can see by the timer here, it is very nearly over. I see his void rays fly into my main, I move my units up there, I see he's left, I move them down, and I decide, okay, you know what? I'm just going to stim to win and end this. Watch. Not only do I have a much bigger army, but, you know, you can see he tries to force field me away, I say, nice try, I'm just going to annihilate your army, and he left the game. So, what did we learn today? We learned that if you are playing a Protoss opponent who could potentially be in more than one spawn location, you probably should send an SCV out to scout, even if you are Reaper expanding. The second thing we learned is that a proxy oracle arrives in your base at about 5 minutes 30 seconds. The third thing we learned is to really be careful and make sure we don't get supply blocked. The fourth thing we learned is that it's very important to keep the Reaper Scout alive. Now, I made this defense look fairly easy and straightforward. However, had I not scouted that he had not taken an expansion, I probably would have assumed that's what he was doing, and then I would not have prepared these bunkers or this missile turret, and this game would have looked very differently. What else, what else have we learned? Stim is a very important upgrade. If you find yourself in situations like these, get Stim as quickly as possible because it will dramatically increase your unit's performance. Okay, everyone, that wraps up this episode of Let's Learn with Limbic. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.